Your blood is your body's most mysterious liquid. It does everything. It carries oxygen, fights infections, and even repairs you when you're hurt. And today, we're explaining every blood disease, one drop at a time. Anemia, the vanishing oxygen. Imagine trying to run a marathon with half your lungs missing. That's what anemia feels like, except it's your blood that's out of breath. Anemia happens when you don't have enough red blood cells, or when the ones you do have don't carry enough oxygen. Your cells start begging for air and suddenly simple things, climbing stairs, staying awake, even thinking clearly, feel like hard work. There are over 400 types of anemia, but they usually fall into three main categories. Your body isn't making enough red blood cells. It's destroying them too quickly. Or you're losing them faster than you can replace them. Iron deficiency anemia is the most common. Iron is what makes hemoglobin, the oxygen-carrying part of red blood cells. Without it, your blood can't do its job. That's why people with low iron often look pale, feel dizzy, and crave ice. Yes, that's a real symptom. But anemia isn't just about iron. There's also pernicious anemia, caused by a lack of vitamin B12. A plastic anemia, where your bone marrow simply stops making new cells. And sickle cell anemia, a genetic mutation that twists red blood cells into painful, crescent shapes. Each version tells a different story, but they all end the same way. Your body runs out of fuel. Hemophilia, the bleeding that won't stop. Most people think of blood as messy, but also manageable. Get a paper cut, it bleeds a little, and then it stops. Simple. But if you have hemophilia, that stop button doesn't work. Hemophilia is a genetic disorder that stops your blood from clotting properly. It doesn't mean you'll bleed faster, just longer. A small bruise can become a big problem. And an internal bleed, something you can't even see, can be deadly. For centuries, hemophilia was known as the royal disease. That's because it ran through the bloodlines of European royalty, especially Queen Victoria's descendants. Back then, medicine didn't understand genetics, so people thought it was a curse. In reality, it's caused by a missing or defective protein called a clotting factor, usually factor 8 or 9. Today, treatment involves regular injections to replace that missing factor. It's not a cure, but it keeps people alive and active. Still, one bad fall or injury can turn routine life into a medical emergency. It's a reminder that even royal blood can be fragile. Leukemia. When blood turns against itself, your blood is constantly renewing itself. Millions of new cells made every second in your bone marrow. But what happens when that system goes rogue? That's leukemia, a type of cancer that begins in the very factory that makes your blood. Instead of producing healthy white blood cells to fight infections, the marrow starts churning out defective ones, immature cells that can't do their job. Worse, they multiply uncontrollably, crowding out the healthy red blood cells and platelets you actually need. The result? Fatigue, unexplained bruising, frequent infections, and in severe cases, organ damage. It's like your immune system declared war on itself, and no one's in charge. There are several forms of leukemia, acute, chronic, lymphocytic, myeloid, each defined by how fast it spreads and which blood cells it corrupts. Some strike suddenly and aggressively. Others creep in slowly, often unnoticed, until routine blood work catches them. Treatments have come a long way, from chemotherapy and bone marrow transplants to modern immunotherapies that train your immune system to hunt the cancer itself. Leukemia was once a death sentence. Now, for many, it's a long, hard fight, but one you can win. Polycythemia. When blood becomes too thick. If anemia is like running on empty, polycythemia is the opposite. Your tank is overflowing. This disorder makes your body produce too many red blood cells. At first, that sounds great. More oxygen, right? But here's the catch. The thicker your blood gets, the harder it is to move. Think of it like trying to pump syrup through a straw. Your heart has to work overtime just to keep things moving. That extra effort raises your risk of clots, strokes, and heart attacks. There are two main types. Polycythemia vera, caused by a genetic mutation that tells your bone marrow to keep making red cells nonstop. And secondary polycythemia, triggered by things like chronic low oxygen, which is why mountain climbers and smokers can sometimes develop it. Symptoms can sneak up slowly. Headaches, dizziness, a red face, 
even itchy skin after a hot shower. Doctors sometimes treat it the old-fashioned way, by removing blood from the body just like in medieval times. It sounds extreme, but thinning the blood is still the most effective way to bring it back into balance. Autoimmune blood diseases, when defense becomes the enemy. Your immune system is supposed to protect you, a loyal army defending your body from bacteria and viruses. But sometimes that army gets confused. It starts attacking its own citizens. That's what happens in autoimmune blood diseases. When your defense system forgets who it's fighting for, one of the most well-known is autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Here, your immune system mistakes red blood cells for invaders and destroys them faster than your body can replace them. The result? You become anemic. Not because you're missing nutrients, but because your own body is sabotaging itself. Then there's immune thrombocytopenic purpura, or ITP for short. In this condition, your immune system targets platelets, the little fragments that help your blood clot. With too few platelets, you bruise easily and bleed for longer than normal. Even brushing your teeth can cause unexpected bleeding. And sometimes, autoimmune issues hit the white blood cells, weakening the very soldiers meant to protect you from infection. It's like firing your entire security team, then leaving the doors wide open. The good news? Treatments like steroids and immune suppressants can calm the chaos. But it's a delicate balance. Quieting the immune system too much leaves you defenseless, and not enough means the war continues inside your veins. Genetic blood disorders, the inherited code errors. Every cell in your body runs on a set of genetic instructions, your DNA. But sometimes those instructions come with errors tiny ones, so small you'd never notice them, until your blood starts to act differently. That's what happens with genetic blood disorders, conditions passed down through families that affect how your blood works. The most famous example is sickle cell disease. Here, a single mutation changes the shape of red blood cells from round and flexible to sharp and curved, like tiny sickles. These cells can't carry oxygen efficiently and they get stuck inside blood vessels, causing intense pain and organ damage. It's one of the clearest examples of how one letter in your DNA can rewrite an entire life story. Then there's thalassemia, another inherited disorder that affects hemoglobin, the protein that carries oxygen. Depending on the mutation, your body might make too little hemoglobin or make it incorrectly. The result, fatigue, weakness, and in severe cases, bone deformities as your marrow struggles to overproduce red blood cells. And finally, hemophilia, which we met earlier, also belongs here, passed silently through generations, sometimes hiding for decades before appearing in a child's blood tests. Genetic blood disorders remind us that sometimes our biggest battles start before we're even born, written in the code that built us. Blood infections, when invaders take over. If your bloodstream is the highway of life, then an infection is a hijacking in progress. Blood infections happen when bacteria, viruses, or fungi break past your body's defenses and enter your circulation, turning a local problem into a full-body crisis. The most dangerous of these is sepsis, not a specific germ, but your body's overreaction to one. When your immune system panics, it releases a flood of chemicals that cause widespread inflammation. Blood pressure drops, <laughs> organs shut down, and without fast treatment, death can come in hours. It's less like being attacked and more like your army setting its own camp on fire. Other blood infections are more specific. Bacteremia is when bacteria themselves are floating in the blood, often after surgery, dental work, or from infections elsewhere in the body. Viremia is the same, but with viruses, like what happens during severe COVID-19 or HIV infection. And fungemia, fungal infections in the bloodstream, can strike people with weakened immune systems, such as cancer or transplant patients. In each case, timing is everything. A few hours can mean the difference between recovery and collapse. Because once the bloodstream is compromised, it's not just an infection anymore. It's a full-scale invasion. Clotting disorders. When blood refuses to flow or stop. Your blood has one of the hardest jobs in the world. It has to flow freely and know exactly when to stop. It's a system that depends on perfect timing. But when that timing fails, things can go very wrong. Let's start with too much clotting, a condition called thrombophilia. Here, your body forms clots even when there's no injury. Those clots can travel to the lungs, heart, or brain, leading to pulmonary embolisms, heart attacks, or strokes. Sometimes it's genetic, 
Sometimes it's triggered by surgery, dehydration, or long hours of sitting still, like on a cross-country flight. Yes, that's why stretching your legs on a plane isn't just advice, it's survival. On the other end is too little clotting, which we've already seen with hemophilia. But there's another one. Von Willebrand disease, the most common inherited bleeding disorder. It happens when a key protein that helps platelets stick together is missing or defective. The result? Frequent nosebleeds, heavy bruising, and wounds that take forever to heal. And then there's disseminated intravascular coagulation, or DIC. The extreme case where the blood clots everywhere inside the body, using up all the clotting material. When that happens, the body runs out of resources to stop bleeding where it actually needs to. It's the most tragic paradox in medicine. Bleeding to death because your blood is clotting too much. When it comes to clotting disorders, the rule is simple. Balance is life. Imbalance is chaos.